Last episode, I finally got the first build down in our new farming district in the form of a farmhouse with a power station inside. We had a surprise bridge review from Real Civil Engineer, and then we discovered Stam had made it to the world ready to restore a village. Today, we place our first farms in the new area, build a big barn, and place a ginormous wheat field with a tractor for harvesting. And I can't wait to make some big progress today because I've got some ideas for the tractor that I think will be quite fun if we can get them to work. But I think before we do anything today, I need to do a little bit of planning because I need to get a big barn here to put some farms in, I need to get a tractor shed down, and we need to work out where these wheat fields are going to go, which to be honest, is probably going to be a massive area over here somewhere. And I think I'm just going to use some cobble to mark out where things are going to go, but first, let's take a little look at our planning board. Because this, of course, is the board of farms that we need to make, and today we're going to be focusing on wheat as a main thing we definitely want to do, but I'm also hoping we can get some of the meats being produced as well in a big barn somewhere. But I haven't quite worked out how we're going to be doing that yet, but I do know it's going to need to be a fairly large barn for a couple of reasons. One, because we've got loads of farms we need to shove inside it, and two, we've already got quite a big farmhouse, and if we had a small barn, that would just look weird. Now the question is, where do we put this barn? Maybe we can have the front corner here. Now a barn about that size should do the job nicely, and I think once we've got that all built up, it should be pretty good to scale in regards to the farmhouse as well. And then what I'm thinking is we can have a small road that sort of goes around the back here, and we'll stick down a tractor shed over this side. And a small tractor shed about that sort of size should do nicely. And then we can have like roads that go through here, a bit more of a sort of yard area over this side. We can extend all this car park out the front. And to be honest, I'll probably have some fields for animals over this side, just have a little bit of cattle and whatnot. And then a massive wheat field over here that the tractor will come and harvest. So that's the current plan. Let's see how things work out because inevitably things change. And I think what with the barn being the biggest building we're putting down here, it probably makes sense to start with that. But for that, we need to gather a few results. Now, as we're building a barn, we're going to need a whole bunch of wood. We'll grab some sheet metal and maybe some of the stone pillars as well. They could look good. But I do want a big chunk of the barn to be red, which means red terracotta probably. Ah, we have none. So I guess that means we can actually use the Beardy Delivery Service over here and we can just send it off to go get some terracotta. So if we do terracotta, and I think 20 stacks of that should be fine. And hopefully he should come back shortly with what we're after. I haven't really used this thing since we initially tested it, but I have finally got all the stations in over there, so it should work now. And in fact, I've even created a list of everything over there that we can get and what station they're in so we can do it in the right order. So yeah, it's nice to actually have that working. Once that terracotta gets here, I do want to make it red, so let's grab some red die and to be honest we're gonna want to sort of balance that with some other blocks and i'm wondering if mangrove is gonna work take a bit of tough and some coarse dirt for some landscaping as well and that should be pretty much all we need once we actually get the bits back but while we wait for that train it's the perfect opportunity for me to go and make a cup of tea so i'll see you in a minute now we have the terracotta, let's turn all of that red. And we're gonna want a bit of strip dark oak as well. And last episode, I couldn't figure out why this wasn't working. And I should have just read the little pop-up. It literally says it's spinning in the wrong direction. So in theory, if I just do that, and that, then yeah, we get stripped wood again. Why it switched directions, I don't know, but at least it's working. Now let's make a start on this barn, shall we? We'll start just by marking out where the walls are gonna go. And then I guess what I should probably do now is just get it all framed out so we can see exactly how big it's going to be. I do want it to be quite large though, so maybe like five on the sides. I'm thinking maybe something along those lines. We'll have a nice big arched roof on each side. We'll have this bit on top. And then I guess we probably want to go up a couple of blocks more. Then maybe that kind of a roof shape on top. Well, I think I'm pleased with that shape. I'm happy to move forward with that. And we've just got an entire building to build. Let's crack on some building music and get going.
There we go. One barn. And I think that's looking pretty good. Scale-wise, it definitely works alongside the farmhouse. And we've also got lots and lots of space inside to put all of our farms. I mean, look at it. This place is huge. And we've got an upstairs as well. I ended up going with a scoria roof, which I think ties it in nicely with the main farmhouse. And then on the main walls here, we've just got terracotta mixed in with a bit of mangrove. And then I've added some pipes and tanks and things like that, like I normally do. I've also added a pulley system here, which can be used for getting hay bales up into the hayloft, which is currently empty because, yeah, I don't actually have any wheat yet. But I think if we put loads of stacks of wheat in here, if we don't need it for anything else, that'll look pretty good from out here. To be honest, we could just use them to hide whatever farms we end up putting up the top. But with that done, and also with the tractor shed marked out, I think we can probably crack on and get some fields sorted out. Now, I know this whole area here is going to be wheat. So, yep, that's going to need a lot of wheat seeds. And I think the majority of this area here might be fields as well. But this area off to the side, I think I'm going to save that for the animal pens. When it comes to the other veg and things like that, I think I'm going to put them around the back of the farm because I just want to have a big sea of wheat out the front. So, bearing in mind the number of seeds I need, I think I'm going to make myself a little system here. We'll have a dispenser. We'll load that up with bone meal. Even more bone meal in the top. We'll make ourselves a knife and then we'll just stand here and do this for ages and this should get us lots of seeds as well as lots of straw which is nice in fact if we put this magnet upgrade on then we should make sure we're picking everything up too well, I've been doing that for a while and I've got myself 5,700 seeds and I've just remembered about this little farm down here and look at this, we've got another 12k here so we're going to take all of these as well and I'm sure that's going to be more than enough means I can get rid of this thing and I need to figure out how I want to plant these seeds but we do have 26 mechanical plows but if we make some more of those things we can probably make just a giant train that stretches across at least a big chunk of the field and then just plow it and plant the seeds automatically. That'll save us loads of work. Now, I think I've got enough of everything, so let's put this plan into action and see how we get on. So we'll just put a rail line down this edge of the field first, then we'll throw down a station here and right-click to create new train. Then on this blue mark here, we're just going to stick a bogey. And we've got 50 deployers, so we're going to do a row of 50. We'll have to just fix up this car park again afterwards, but that's fine. Then we'll stick plows all along this bit and deployers behind them. Some barrels to put seeds in. And I think that should just about do it. Oh, no, we're going to need train controls and a seat, of course. So I have a seat, but doesn't look like I have any train controls, which means we're going to need a few more precision mechanisms. Let's quickly go do that. But hopefully, once we've got those in, this should work. Now, let's just quickly glue our wonderful train together. So I think we've got all of it. Now, I just need to load up the barrels with seeds, and we should be good to go. So let's assemble the train, set this to a nice low speed so we can see if it's going to work. Hopefully. Yeah, look at that. We just got a lot slower though, I think. We seem to be missing some patches. This is the way to farm. And just like that, we've got a massive field. And to be honest, I quite like the little patches that it's left. Now, if we move this over to here, then we should be able to carry this on across the road. I mean, we're going to have to redo some of the road, but that's fine. <laughs> Approximately 15,000 wheat seeds later, I think we're looking pretty good out here. We still need to wait for this bit here to grow, but it's looking really good. And not only that, I've also gone and wrangled up a few animals. I've been breeding up a few cows and pigs and things because, well, we want to make sure that we've got enough for our farm later on. But they've also got their own little pen at the side here, which I think I've fully protected and they shouldn't be able to escape. But they do seem to love this wool for some reason. In fact, while I'm here, it's probably breeding time again. Can't see any babies about. So we've done a bunch of building here so far today, but I think it's about time we actually start farming some of these crops, primarily the wheat over here. And for that, we're going to need a tractor. I mean, I would build a giant combine harvester, but seeing as how we're basically trapped in the 50s, I think a small tractor with a plow behind it is going to be just a little bit better. And hopefully it will fit with the area a bit more. So I've gone and got a few bits that should help me make a tractor. We're just going to see how we get on. We're going to make a nice red tractor, I think. And I'm just going to start building it right here in the middle of the yard. First thing we're going to need is some big wheels at the back. And I guess the back's probably going to be five wide. So to there, big tractor wheels. And then maybe just a couple of small wheels at the front. 
blocks. Now, how to tractor. I guess we're going to need some kind of an engine type block at the front here. And can we maybe attach the wheels just like that? Is that going to look weird? I mean, it certainly looks weird at the moment. And then I think I want to grab some slabs because I kind of want to have a block at the bottom here that's a different colour. And I was thinking maybe these pillars could work. I guess this back area should probably come down a little bit lower, say to maybe there. And if we think about the train controls, we're going to need controls going in both directions. So I guess that's going to have to go here and here. And then we're going to use a couple of these funky three-way corner pillar things because I think these could be a good way to get the wheels attached. Something like that. And you know what? I think I might swap out a couple of these as well. But it's not looking too bad, though maybe it can do with a bit more of a shape down there. But I'll tell you what, I'm not sure on those wheel connectors. I don't like the way it left that bit sort of open and visible. It just looks a little bit weird. So let's use stairs instead. Then we need to get a bit more shape here on the side. So maybe we can do something like that. Right, this is actually looking quite good. I'm liking how this is coming together. So I just need to tidy up the back here. And if we do something a bit like this, with a couple of those there. So I want to be able to attach like a chain thing that goes to the plow at the back. So we're certainly getting there, but the front here is looking a bit weird and still a bit exposed. So I'm thinking maybe what we should do is try and shape this bit here a little bit. So maybe we can use some of these slopey bits and potentially more levers. Kind of works. But the front here is still looking a little bit weird as well. Maybe we can block up a bit of this. Maybe like that. Yeah, I like that. That's got more shape. Stick an exhaust on top. In fact, just to give that a bit more shape, if we were to make a framed flower pot and stick that on top. Wonderful. Still a few more bits to sort, though. So in the center of the wheel, maybe we can use one of those iron, raw iron blocks. What is it? Thick inlaid raw iron block. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And we can just use framed buttons for the front wheels. Though maybe a framed button in the middle of those as well isn't a bad idea. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's get some lights on the back here. And I feel like this top area here is kind of missing something. Maybe we can just use a couple of levers and grab a chain. And we'll just stick that in there. I think for a pokey little tractor, that's looking pretty good. Now let's figure out the harvester that's going to attach to the back. So for the harvester, let's start with a few grindstones. This is how we're going to attach it. And then I guess it's time to crack out the girders. And let's think about this. If we want the harvesters to be here, maybe about that many, we can stick all these. Oh, no, we can't stick these directly to those. So I guess I'm going to have to use some temporary blocks. That should do it. And then we can stick our girders back in. Next up, we're going to need to get some storage in. So let's maybe make a bit of space here. And we're going to make some of these. The framed secret storage. Because that way, we can just disguise it as part of the combine harvester instead of having barrels stuck all over it. And then they should just blend in nicely with everything else, which is good. Although, actually, instead of having them on the side here, I think I might try and get a bit of shape into this. So if we would stick shoots there and there, and then attach one to the side that side, and the same here... We're going to need quite a lot of storage on here, so maybe I should bring it up a little bit higher. Then we'll get a few bits of detail on. Maybe just some random shafts here, because why not? And I reckon we're looking pretty good. So we've got our tractor, we've got our harvester. Now we need to glue it all together and turn it into a train. So for now, let's just stick a little bit of rail directly underneath it. Put a station down around about there. And is that directly underneath where we want? It is. We'll stick a bogey there. A block just to indicate that's the front of the train, because that was a problem I had in the last area. And then I want to make this a separate carriage for reasons which will become clear soon. So if we dig out underneath this one as well, we'll put the bogey right there. Nope, in fact, that's going to be under the storage interface. We don't want that, so let's go one block over. Then we're going to need a few glass panes so we can actually get the two attached. Now to glue all of this together. And I want to make sure these are separate carriages. So this bit is going to be separate from the tractor. And we shall call this tractor. Very imaginative. And let's see if we've left anything behind. Doesn't appear we did. Look at us go. Awesome. So now we've got a tractor. What I need to do is work out the route it's going to take through our fields. That's going to be an interesting one. I'll see you in a minute when I've got something worked out. A short while later and I've got lots of rail in underground, which should hopefully do the trick. And I've also got a ruined car park, but we'll fix that later. But now what I want to do is just check the route and make sure that this is all going to work. So let's give it a go and let's slow right down, actually. So let's see how much of this field we get. Oh, okay. 
right, we've got a slight problem here in that I haven't put enough storage on the combine. And this rail here looks to be one row out as well. But apart from that, I'd say that's pretty good. We've managed to harvest a huge amount of the field. But for now, we need to sort out storage. So let's put it into a station. And I think we've got a few places here. If we get rid of these chutes, we should be able to add some more of the barrels. So I've added five more barrels. Hopefully that'll be enough. While we're here, let's fix this bit of rail. That needs to be moved over by one. And that should mean that next time it goes round, it'll actually take out this middle bit here because that just looks silly. But now we know the route the tractor's taking, I do actually want to put in some road marks in the field and so on, but we'll get to that later. First off, we need to deal with a little problem because we want to park this tractor over here in what will be the tractor sheds, but there's no way that harvester is getting through that gap. Luckily, I think I have a solution. That is to make one of these, a train coupler. What do we need? Just a flat piece of iron. We can sort that. Yoink. So let's make one of these. Let's see if it'll do what I want it to do. First up, I need to actually turn the tractor around. Then let's pull into this station here. But position-wise, I guess we can go back a few more blocks. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Now, this is where the train coupler comes in, which basically means I'll be able to couple and decouple trains just when it pulls into a station. I'm hoping we can actually automate it. So if I place this under this bogey when it's pulled into the station and place that there... Oh, no, it's all the way back here. So let's try placing that there. If we set this to four meters, let's just get this out of the way for a second so we can see what we're doing. So like that, that should be the right position. We'll pull this back into the platform and that should be parked on both those plates, hopefully. It looks like they're in the right position. So now if I do this, look at that, it's decoupled the tractor from the harvester. So I should just be able to drive off the tractor on its own now. Yep, perfect. Then if I put a secondary station here, we'll just call that Harvester 2 for now. We'll put another comparator there. And hopefully when the tractor backs up into this station, the bogey should stop there, which will hopefully activate this whole thing again. And the theory is it'll reconnect the Harvester. So we've backed in. The question is, has it connected? It has. Amazing. Then if we pull back into Harvester Station again and then drive off. Oh, look at that. We'll just test that again. If we pull up here, we'll pull into the harvester station. Then we can drive off. We can go park, and then next day we can come here. We can then pick up the harvester again. And oh, look at that. That's amazing. That makes me very happy. But now I think we need to fix these fields a little bit, which means I need to put some tractor trails in. So we'll just need to figure out where the wheels line up and destroy all the crops in this row. That's my basic plan. it's still got a bit of growing to do but i think with all those tracks in it's definitely making it look more field like and speaking of growing i think it's about time we sped that up and that means we need to add some water sources and my thinking is we can use these tracks as a guide we can just stick some water sources in and hopefully that'll speed things up just a little bit but there's a couple of other things i also want to do in this field just to bring it to life a little bit more and stop it from being a massive sea of yellow but let's solve the water problem first which means i'm gonna need a bunch of buckets and i've got loads there wow and we're gonna need a whole bunch of water to now, what I want to know is, can we waterlog framed slabs? Aha, we can. Excellent. So let's quickly run around and get this field hydrated. The fields are now hydrated and things are growing much quicker. There's only a few green patches left. However, I have actually added my own green patches as well. I've just put in a few bits of grass here and there just to break up the sea of yellow. And I really think that helps. But we're not done yet. This is a wheat field after all, and that means we still need something else in here. And that is, of course, a scarecrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a mod that we've not actually used much yet. And that is the straw statues mod. Let's make a bunch of these. If you've used the statues mod before, this is fairly similar to that, but... Look at this UI. We can basically do whatever we want with it. Not only that, you can also type in any player name and it will replace the actual statue with the skin of that player, which is cool. But uh, yeah, we actually just want straw statues for this one. They are scarecrows after all. We've got some preset poses here, but I don't think any of these are going to be particularly useful. We could start with Joyous, I guess. So I think that sort of pose should work well. Then we also want to turn on no gravity. But now we need to get him into position. So we can do this to raise him up. Then we can change the X position as well. 
Let's get him kind of attached to the pole. Well, I think he looks pretty well attached to the pole. Yeah, that works. We have our first scarecrow. Let's go plonk a couple more down. And there we go. We've got a few scarecrows in the fields. I think that's going to work nicely. I've also just placed a broken one on the floor here as well for a little bit of detail. And I think that looks quite good. Silly scarecrows. But now the field is actually completely finished and it's pretty much fully regrown as well. Now what we need to do is unload this stuff into there. There is a storage system in there. So hopefully this should be fairly easy to link up. Let's just start by digging down and then we'll dig all the way over to the harvester. And we need to connect that up to there. So we'll get all of these spruce trims in. So we'll stick a portable storage interface there. Smart shoot there and a draw control to slave. And hopefully that's all going into the system now. And that would indeed appear to be the case. But I need to get some storage upgrades in here. Otherwise, this is not going to pan out for us. And to be honest, the seeds aren't really going to be much use to us. So we'll probably just put a void upgrade on that one. Well, that's working a treat. And this is all from one harvest. It's still going. And we didn't even collect it all because we didn't have enough storage on the harvester. So yeah, I think it's safe to say this place is going to be very productive. So storage is sorted. The field is great and our tractor is hopefully going to be ready for its first actual journey which means we need a driver and it's very tempting to use an animal but uh, well they're already going to have a purpose in this farm so I don't think we should use animals also driving the tractors and that means we're going to do something a little bit different and for that we just need to make ourselves a conductor's cap well, that should be fairly straightforward so we need a bit of wool we need a piece of string and we need a precision mechanism so if we give that to you... Oh no, wait a minute, what way around was it? Okay, so you can have the string, you can have the mechanism, and you can have the wool. And hopefully... Yep, look at that, a white conductor's cap. And using this, we're going to make ourselves a driver. A tiny little driver. And I can't believe it's taken me almost 5,000 days to do this, but here we are. Boop. There we go, look at that, we have a conductor. What a cool little dude. And we can put him here in this seat. And then we need to write a schedule. And that's where things are going to get a bit tricky because I don't know how much we can slow this thing down. I don't want it constantly going, maybe like once every two days or so. But I don't even know if that's possible. So let's have a look. And I think for working out the route for this tractor, it's going to make sense to go underground. So this is the garage. It's going to come out here, go this way. And we need it to pick up the harvester which means ideally we need to pull up to this station here, which is farmyard entrance. So we'll go there and just wait for one second. And then we need to go to harvester two. And that is this station here, I believe. Yep, perfect. So that's going to pick up the harvester. And now we need to try and force it to do the route over here. I've got a few signals down, which I think are going to help. But the first thing we want to do is have it go this way. So in theory, if we send it just to this station here, which can only be got at from this direction, it should go this way, go round, go around that loop, and then come down here and pull into that station. I think that's what we want. This is field two, genius station naming. And then what we want to do is send it this way, and then it has to go to the right, which means it will loop around there. Can't go this way, so it will have to go this way and loop around there. That's good. Once again, can't go that way, so it's going to get forced out this way. It'll go all the way around and then come to this station here, field one. Probably could have guessed that. Then after field one, it should be able to go this way, this way, this way, through here. And once it comes through the gate, we need it to go up to here so it can then reverse in. So that's farm harvester reverse, and then farm harvester. Wait there for a few seconds while it gets detached. Then we want him to come all the way up around this way, over to this station, which is tractor park reverse. Wait there for a second. Oh, this is a long route, isn't it? And then it can finally back up to here, the tractor park. And I think the only other thing I want to do is just put in a few max speed limits here and there. But I think that should be all we need to do. But as always, there's only one way to find out. Off you go.
Well, it looks like that does the trick just nicely. And in regards to the schedule delay, I think I've solved that one as well. So once it's completed its long journey, what it's going to do is it's going to wait for 25 minutes, and then the next time it's 8am, that's when he's going to go off and do another thing. So it should r happen roughly once every sort of two to three days, which I think is going to be ideal. And the amount of wheat we get from one harvest is crazy. It's about 6,000, so yeah, definitely going to have enough wheat. And the good news is, that's the first one of these done. But we're not finished yet, because at the end of the day, of course, the tractor comes over here and it parks in its tractor shed, but the tractor shed doesn't exist yet, so I think that's going to be our next little project here. I've just gone and grabbed a bunch of stony bits. I think I want to make this look like an old sort of stone shed that's just been converted to a tractor shed. So it probably won't be anything too fancy, but hopefully it should do the job. Let's just crack on and get this done. And I think that should do the job nicely. We have our little tractor shed. It's a little bit empty on the inside, but we can probably stick something in there, I guess. Maybe some spare tractor parts and whatnot. I don't know. We'll figure something out. In fact, we could even put a tractor here that's like not got any wheels in it or something. Who knows? It may even just remain empty forever. I really don't know yet. But I'm happy to finally call the wheat farm done. And that got a little bit out of hand. It wasn't supposed to be quite that epic. But I'm glad it is. At least we're not going to run out of wheat. And with any luck, the tractor should be pulling off again soon. It all seems to have regrown. So maybe even in the morning, he'll head back out and harvest everything up again. The next thing to do is, of course, sort out all the meat and animal products. But that's going to have to wait for next episode, I'm afraid. Because, well, we got a lot done this episode. And in fact, it was a lot more than I expected in regards to the wheat field. But it's all good. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.